It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Welcome to the teaching ministry of Life Changing Ministries International with Dr. E.K.D. Quick. With your Bible in hand and your heart open to learn, let's join the teaching in progress. From the book of Nahum, we are continuing our teaching series on the book of Nahum, chapter by chapter and verse by verse. The book of Nahum, written between 663 B.C. and 612 B.C. The book of Nahum, written by the prophet Nahum, which means comfort, consolation. It means to console. And the prophet Nahum comforted, consoled, and brought consolation to the tribe of Judah in the south and the remnants of the nation of Israel that remained after its captivity in the northern kingdom. This comfort is particularly directed toward God's vengeance and divine justice towards the Assyrian Empire, particularly the capital of Nineveh. The Assyrian Empire, the Ninevites brought terror, cruelty, oppression for centuries to the nation of Israel, and now God is bringing comfort in the form of his divine justice and judgment by the words of Nahum. The book of Nahum was written approximately a hundred years after the prophecy of Jonah. As a result, the book of Nahum is often called Jonah Part 2. This is because Jonah preached to the Ninevites to repent or destruction was coming their way. And the Ninevites the capital of Assyria, the oppressors of Israel, repented and God spared them for the next generation. However, after that generation, the Assyrian Empire went back to its cruel, inhumane ways, and as a result, judgment was coming by the mouth of Nahum the prophet. This teaches us that it is not enough to start the road and journey with the Lord, but to be faithful and finish that particular journey. We see this example in the city of Ephesus, how Paul, the apostle, founded the Ephesian church in Acts chapter 19 in the mid-50s A.D. Paul continued and wrote an epistle to the Ephesians, who were believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, in 64 A.D. However, in the mid-90s A.D., approximately 35 some odd years after their conversion, Jesus Christ, in chapter 2, tells the Ephesian church to repent or be judged. This teaches us, just like the city of Nineveh, that they started out on the journey through repentance, believing in the Lord. But after a generation, they turned back to their ways and were under the thumb of potential judgment. We must be faithful to the end, and we must also pass on the goodness of the Lord to the next generation. For if we do not pass on God's goodness and salvation through Jesus Christ to the next generation, then the next generation individuals or the next generation empires or nations that are trusting in the Lord will turn away from the Lord if we don't pass it on. And they too will turn away as Nineveh and as Ephesus did in the scriptures. It's not how we start, it's how we finish. 
Scripture teaches, train up a child in the way he shall go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. This book of Nahum is a prophecy of judgment against the capital Nineveh of the Assyrian Empire. This Assyrian Empire came to power approximately 1900 BC in northern Mesopotamia. After a brief rise in power, the Babylonians took control for several centuries. After the Babylonian Empire fell in the mid 1300s BC and stayed in power as the world dominant empire until approximately 612 BC, this Assyrian Empire was being judged for its inhumanity. The Assyrian Empire was cruel. It was ravenous and dealt with plunder, drunkenness, and violence. This Assyrian Empire would pile heaps of skulls in the city of its captors. This Assyrian Empire would impale its defeated enemies on stakes. This Assyrian Empire was known for its cruelty. This is the... Assyrian Empire, as outlined as one of the historical world empires, as listed in Daniel chapter 2, Daniel chapter 7, and the book of Revelation chapter 17. This Assyrian Empire rose to great power, dominating the sea, trade, and commerce. It was known for its grandeur and invulnerability, and as a result, was very prideful and arrogant. The capital of Nineveh was the size of modern-day London, known for its great towers, hundreds of feet high and hundreds of feet wide, where at least three chariots can ride on the towers side by side. This Assyrian Empire for centuries dominated the Fertile Crescent and the known world and were oppressors to the nation of Israel, taking them into captivity approximately 721 BC according to 2 Kings chapters 17 and 18 by King Shalmaneser. At that time, the northern tribes of Israel, taken into captivity, left just Judah, Benjamin, and several remnants from the northern kingdom alone and vulnerable to further domination. This is the teaching on the book of Nahum, chapter 2. Part 2, verses 7 through 8. And Huzzab shall be led away captive. She shall be brought up, and her maids shall lead her as with the voice of doves, tabering upon their breasts. But Nineveh is of old like a pool of water, yet they shall flee away. Stand, stand, shall they cry, but none shall look back. Here in verse 7, this is a picture of Nineveh, or the queen of Nineveh, being taken away by the opposing armies. And all within the city is making noise, as the noise of wings of doves, the noise of beating the chest in lamentation and mourning and crying and great woe. Verse 8 speaks of a command to stand strong, yet individuals retreat due to the flood that destroyed the walls. Verses 9 through 10 
Take ye the spoil of silver, take the spoil of gold, for there is none end of the store and the glory out of all the pleasant furniture. She is empty and void and waste, and the heart melteth. And the knees smite together, and much pain is in all their loins, and the faces of them all gather blackness. Here in verse 9 and 10, we see the spoil and plunder of Nineveh. As Nineveh in the past would destroy nations and plunder and take away all the wealth and utterly vanquish their opponents, becoming the wealthiest of empires during that time. Here, judgment is saying that they shall be plundered, that they shall be emptied, that they shall be brought to ruin. Verse 10 further speaks of their blackness as a mourning, as sadness, as utter lamentation, dreading the time of their plunder, their utter ruin, going from the richest to the poorest. This also is applied to today as a form of judgment, as Jesus warns us by saying, But woe unto you that are rich, the wicked rich, for ye shall receive your consolation. Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. Nineveh was in a place of richness and laughter and oppression of others. And now Nineveh is in a place of being in mourning and weeping and poor and plundered. Individuals today who judge others thinking that they are better than others must be careful to take heed that they may laugh now, but they may be sad and weeping later. Verses 11 through 12. Where is the dwelling of the lions and the feeding place of the young lions, where the lion, even the old lion, walked and the lions whelp, and none made them afraid? The lion did tear in pieces enough for his whelps, and strangled for his lionesses, and filled his holes with prey, and his dens with raven. Here in verse 11, the lion was the symbol of the Assyrian Empire, and further also later as the Babylonian Empire. The Assyrian kings were known for hunting lions. The Assyrian soldiers Here, symbolized as lions, also are known for their strength. Here in verse 12, it also speaks of the abundance, how the lion had plenty of food from the hunt, and the whelps ate, and the lionesses ate, and there was plenty of food to go around. But even though there's abundance from this invasion from this war, from this battle, all will be taken away. No longer will there be abundance of food and wealth. No longer will there be abundance for the Assyrian Empire, but all will be gone away and starvation is coming. The plunder and the theft and the vanquishing of empires from the Assyrian Empire is now the judgment upon the Assyrian Empire as they are plundered, as they are starved, as they are left without anything. Verse number 13, Behold, I am against thee, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will burn her chariots in the smoke, and the sword shall devour thy young lions, and I will cut off thy prey from the earth, and the voice of thy messengers shall no more be heard. Here in verse 13, the quote of judgment is upon Nineveh as the Lord says, Behold, I am against thee, saith the Lord. Jesus quoted, Either you are for me or you are against me. It is a tragic thing 
for God to say, I am against you. God's arms are open for all those to come to him in the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. For scripture teaches, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God wants individuals to make a decision to receive the love of God through Christ Jesus or reject the love of God through Christ Jesus through unbelief. Scripture teaches, he that believeth is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. What a tragic thing it is for the Lord to say, I am against you. Here in verse 13, speaking again of the utter ruin of Assyria. No more messengers will come their way, such as Jonah and Nahum. This is Nineveh, the Assyrian Empire, founded in Genesis chapter 10 by Nimrod. This is Assyria, known for its plunder and cruelty of other nations, taxing other nations under their thumb. This is Nineveh, known for impaling their enemies on stakes, known for burying their enemies in sand up to their chin, known for piling and heaping skulls of their enemies in the gates. This is Nineveh, known as such a cruel and ravenous country that when they were on the war march, the cities in their path would commit suicide rather than face the cruelty and torture and utter destruction from the Assyrian army. And here the Assyrians that once repented at the preaching of Jonah are coming under the judgment call from Nahum to utter ruin. Scripture teaches, Proverbs chapter 29 verse 1, He that being often reproved, hardeneth his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. Scripture is teaching that individuals refusing to repent will come under swift and sudden judgment. Scripture teaches today is the day and now is the time to trust and give their life to Christ. Scripture teaches tomorrow is not promised to us and individuals as the Holy Ghost is pricking and touching their heart should bow their knee and confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Scripture teaches Wherefore, when the Holy Ghost speaketh, harden not your heart. This is the teaching on the book of Nahum, chapter 2, part 2. And on today, if you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, or if you have strayed away from His love and kindness, I invite you to bow your head and pray this prayer with me today. This prayer of salvation, this prayer of rededication. Won't you pray this prayer with me today? Oh God, I am a sinner. I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins. I believe that God raised him from the dead. Come into my heart come into my life. Save me today. Forgive me, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you for listening to the teaching ministry of Life Changing Ministries International. LCMI is a Christian non-denominational teaching ministry based solely on the Holy Bible dedicated to pleasing God, glorifying Jesus Christ, and ensuring that the Bible is the foundation in everything this ministry proclaims and endorses. For more information 
log on to our website at lifechangingministries.com. Please join us again next time for more Bible teaching. And remember, we have the victory through Jesus Christ.